everybody. My background looks a little familiar. That's because I'm driving Project Ron. We're going to do some content this weekend. And uh, I am uh, following Adam. He's ahead of me. I'm not going to show you what car he's driving because it's probably going to appear in this video later. We'll see. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, I've uh, now driven Project Ron uh, probably about 100 miles. And it's, uh, it's a great highway car. Uh, you can probably hear that it's uh, considerably more quiet on the highway now that uh, Adam has changed the tires. Uh, it now has Continental ECS on it on 16-inch uh, wheels. So uh, we've got some different wheels on here in case you're wondering why the Kogekis are gone off of uh, Project Run. That's why. So anyway, uh, we're going to have some fun with some cars here. So let's get started. Project Run is a 2003 Miata LS that was built by Flying Miata. Now the point here is not to say that Ron is the fastest car ever made, because it's definitely not. We're just using it as a benchmark on which to judge all of the other cars that we're testing here. Okay, go. I don't, think we, I don't think I have it set to do 60 to zero. Oh, <laughs> what was it? Did you see? No, I didn't. I, I, I wanted to, to record the, uh, that you did a faster time on zero to 60, but it was only a tenth of a second. Six, six, seven. Six, six, seven. Yeah. But I don't know what I got to do to do uh, zero, 60 to zero, so. I bogged the uh, start a bit, so I think that probably. Do you want to try it out on the highway once? Yeah, we'll go over there. Go. Okay. Missed, missed a Q shift. Yeah, but you got a way better time. Because I actually. So we have a, a 2.180 to 30 and 6.370 to 60. Which is respectable uh -huh. for an MB. Especially. Yeah, well, just, just wait for the banana. Oh, oh yeah. I guess it's eight yeah, and the half ba banana's gonna be more like eight or nine. nine. Yeah, nine seconds. <laughs> yeah. Now, nobody behind you, right? No. Okay. Get up to 60 and then break as hard as you can. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, that was pretty insane. <laughs> All right. Did it record it or you just wanted to see what had happened? Well, it might have recorded it, so I don't know. <laughs> All right, our first contender against Ron is the banana. The Banana is a 2002 Special Edition. How many miles this thing got on it? 203,439. This is a little tired NB, basically. It's mature. <laughs> What's that? I said it's mature. It's mature, yeah, this is a mature NB. We're gonna stack this up against Ron and see how well it does. We're not, we're, we're not expecting it to do well, but uh, this is kind of a baseline for NB, although this NB is not stock. What all have you done to this so far? Uh, well, it's been mostly maintenance. I don't know that there's anything. So we did the timing wise. belt, but you did you did do the cat back and the yes, okay, and mid pipe, mid pipe so. and mid pipe and cat back, and you have slotted rotors on it. Slotted rotors, yeah, but but uh, factory calipers. I think it's Hawk brake pads, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Dot four fluid, steel brake lines. So you have a little bit better than stock brake. Yeah. So we'll see how that stacks up to Ron. Also, Ron, of course, has a big brake kit on it. So. <laughs> so but this Honestly, is... I hope we just stop in general. <laughs> yeah. That would be nice. Yeah. yeah. But this is our baseline to give you an idea of what a stock MV is like versus Ron. This is attempt one right here.
3.45 seconds. It's part of the thing with zero to 60 timing, this thing is I just, I don't, I'm not willing to launch it this, the way that I did with Rob. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, this car is a little fragile, so <laughs> I don't know how much we want to do a full send on this car. I'm actually impressed this thing, I'm impressed the way this thing stops, first of all, but I guess that makes sense because of the pads and rotors. Yeah. But I'm also impressed that these tires did not lock up because there's no ABS on this car. Oh, really? And these tires are... Old. Wait, there's no ABS on this one? No, this, this one does not have ABS. Huh. All right, here's zero to 60 attempt two. Hey, there you go. <laughs> All right, 3.58 for uh, zero to 60 to zero and six, zero to 60. 8.87 seconds. That was a nice improvement from the other one. Yep, yeah. yeah. All right. And for our next contender, we have a 2019 Brembo Club. So we have Brembo brakes on this car. Uh, how many miles do we have on this one? 20,000. Okay, so it's this one's nice and fresh, and you do have a few mods on this one as well, right? Uh, main thing is uh, just the axle back exhaust. Uh, that's not true, cat back exhaust. Okay, so, so it does have an exhaust. Uh, we have uh, Continental ECS tires on it also. So, uh, don't know if that'll help at all, but uh, we'll see how this car stacks up to run. So let's, uh, let's send it. Attempt number one. Wow. <laughs> oh, damn. Okay, so we had 2.85. Uh, I didn't get to read it. Uh, 606. And 606. So, so far the ND's got it. Mm -hmm. And go. Little. Little. It's too little the first time and too much the second time. That was a 6.42. So I get up to 60. Okay, break. Wow. <laughs> okay. That was a 2.92. Wow. So the the banana still got it. I, think I bet Ron's gonna do better than that though, because Ron's crazy. It must be the weight. Could be, but I mean to is... be fair, that that car is running aggressive, more aggressive pads and rotors. True, and this car is stock, right? And this car is stock pads and rotors. Car, yeah. yeah. Okay, but it is the Brembos, but. But yeah, it is stock pads and rotors. It would be interesting to do it again once, you know, to, to do pads and rotors on this and see what kind of a difference it makes. Yeah. I bet it's pretty substantial, but <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm impressed at how, how much stopping power. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if Ron stopped very similar to the yellow car. Because I don't know when we did this stop and run, that was pretty crazy. <laughs> I don't, I can't really, I can't really judge it from the driver's seat because it, it's hard to judge. It's like the old butt dyno isn't very well calibrated. So. <laughs> no okay, around. so this is attempt number three, I think. <laughs> we got into the ABS there a little bit. Yeah, ABS kicked in a little bit, but that was pretty, uh, I'd say that was legit. <laughs> Another attempt, go. That was a 621. 
think we've I think we've maxed out the braking. I don't need to do that again. No, I think we're good on the braking. <laughs> so I think we we definitely found the limit of the braking. <laughs> <laughs> Getting into ABS on dry pavement. Yeah, I I, I don't know if we're going to do much better than that. All right, so you might notice that uh, the vehicle we're in right now is a little bit bigger than the other ones that we've been in. Uh, Adam, do you want to tell them what this car is? This is a 2023 Rivian R1T dual motor performance. <laughs> so yeah, I think this car is going to pretty much destroy everything that we've done. We don't know about the braking, but as far as the acceleration, I think it's pretty much hands down this car is going to win. And this is my first ever time riding in a Rivian, so this is going to be a genuine reaction to the first time this car sends it. So we'll see how this goes. <laughs> We got a little bit of rain, so slight wet condition here. We'll see how see how it does. All right, ready. I'm I'm gonna sit back because I know it's gonna throw my head against the seat. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> oh my god! Three point seven two seconds. Oh. <laughs> and three point two eight and sixty to zero. Oh my god. We spun all four wheels because it is wet. It is <laughs> it is actually wet out. And uh, this still thing is sub ridiculous. <laughs> oh my god, that's insane. <laughs> you can tell the the uh, Wet traction is definitely the limiter on the braking too. Oh yeah, we could, have, we could have stopped quite a bit sooner without. Yeah, without it the kind of brain. slid a little bit. So. Yeah. Oh wow. There you go. There's a double rainbow. Look at that. Oh my God! Right across the sky. <laughs> Man, I cannot believe how fast this thing accelerates. That's ridiculous. Seven thousand pounds. And it's seven thousand pounds. Yeah. Here's take two. <laughs> that was 3.79. Do a braking test over here. Over the hill here. Alright. No. <laughs> 3.21. Oh my god. <laughs> the 0 to 60 is about almost identical, isn't it? Yeah. Well, 3.79 for the 0 to 60. But that wasn't your fastest one. The first one was faster. It was a little faster, yeah. Yeah, but still. Oh, and, and we're only at like 50% charge right now also, so I don't know if that has a factor in here. But um, yeah, this thing is pretty impressive. Well, the thing I, I noticed from uh, doing the ND is that I definitely need to lean back on the seat because it was like slamming my on the hits, the headrest every time you uh every time you shifted gears is like bam bam <laughs> yeah the only thing about a, the, the future of cars being electric is that it's definitely going to take some of the fun out of it the engagement yeah it's going to take out the engagement and and it's like one of the things that is so fun about the internal combustion cars is the sound. Yep. And that's going to be gone. Well, a lot of fake sound. Hyundai Ionic 5Ns with their their fake sound and the Charger, the new the, or new Challenger. Yeah, but the the one that the only car that's executed it well so far is the is the Hyundai. Yeah, this thing is absurd. <laughs> okay. Attempt number 3, go. <laughs> oh god, that's freaking nuts. All right, so it's a 396 0 to 60 and a 338 60 to 0. Yeah, we definitely felt like we were sliding around a little bit more. Yeah, it's the pavement's kind of wet, so this truck is at a disadvantage to the cars. 
but it weighs like what twice as much as a Miata, like more than twice the. the uh, oh, whoa, 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 okay. <laughs> Damn. It can take corners too. <laughs> Holy crap. Um, but this car weighs what more than twice the, the weight of, of, of a single Miata. Mm -hmm. So it's probably like almost three times the weight of a Miata. Yeah, yeah. And it can go and stop like that. That is just mind blowing. <laughs> the world of electric vehicles. Yep. Like I said, I have mixed feelings about it because it's like that kind of acceleration and performance is just insane. But taking away the the sound and and the you know the, the engagement that's you know that's going to be tough i'm not sure how they're going to manage that yeah yeah i agree that's why i own three miatas <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm stuck with one personally i i don't have the budget for more than one and if I, even if i did i don't have a place to put it so <laughs> one day I will have another. Well, let's face it though, the Miata is not an acceleration car. The braking is important, but uh, as far as acceleration, we all know it's not the fastest car in the world. But what the Miata is good at is handling. So we thought that it might be a good idea to put these two cars to the test on one of our favorite roads. And these are the two best performing cars of the group. We're gonna give the Rivian an asterisk for this one. But uh, so we've got the 2019 ND Club and we've got a project run in front of me. Uh, I'm gonna let him go ahead because I think he's gonna destroy me on handling. And uh, let's see how it goes. So let's do it. saying something right now but if you were seeing what I'm seeing out the front window you would also be speechless. <laughs> yeah this is a proper Miata road here. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah Ron is eating me up. <laughs> I do say that I miss the slightly longer gearing in the ND a little bit, but on these really twisty sections of road, I can still get a pretty good run on a third gear. But I'll say I find myself favoring fourth a lot more in this car over the ND. I've never driven a five-speed NB, so I don't know how that compares, but with the six-speed, definitely working with quite a bit shorter uh, gearing. Ron is gone. <laughs> look at that, look how far ahead he is. <laughs> oh my God. Ron's like, bye. <laughs> wow, what an experience. Yeah, you're absolutely destroying me on these corners. <laughs> said a couple things over the radio but honestly I was so focused on uh, just trying to keep up with this thing that uh, I couldn't even reach for the radio. <laughs> well mine went flying across the car about halfway through that. <laughs> I will say the, the mid-range torque that you get from the turbo on this is just an absolute, uh, it's a blast uh, on corner exit. It's just there and ready to go. It's so good. Yeah, I definitely agree there. Um, I can't wait to try it on some of these corners too. I will say that driving this car and realizing that, you know, the power between the two is very similar, you know, it really makes me uh, want to get that car sorted from a suspension and a chassis perspective, kind of the way that this one is, because I can imagine that that would be uh, just equally as, as fun. Yeah, a set of coilovers on this car at the very least would make a huge difference.
I mean, one thing I'm noticing is I, I do notice the body roll when we go around those really tart, sharp corners there. So, uh, oh, whoa, look at that. That's insane. It went head on into the tree, holy cow. just kind of spitting a little bit now and the roads are dry so hopefully it'll stay that way until our next stop. Uh, Adam and I are going to swap cars. I'm going to drive Project Ron uh, to lead and he's going to follow me and uh, we're just going to both get the back-to-back -back experience of the two cars. And yeah, see when we're doing stuff like this I think it's not tough to keep up with Ron but as soon as we start getting into the tight corners it's like nope I gotta slow down because this car has a lot of body roll to it, and uh, Project Ron, I can see he's sitting pretty much flat through all these corners, and yeah, I mean, he's got coilovers and all the bracing and everything, and this is just a stock suspension with Bilstein, so I don't, uh, I don't think it's any big surprise that Ron is uh, better at handling. This is where Ron's going to kill me right here. <laughs> I'm, I'm already conceding defeat. We haven't even gone into it. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, I don't think I'd feel comfortable taking this car this fast. <laughs> oh my god, he is just killing it. Wow. <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah. And Ron is gone. <laughs> you can see how far ahead of he is it's right there. <laughs> He's already at the corner. And I'm at the corner right now. Oh, yeah. And these are tight. Oh, my God. <laughs> ah. <laughs> see him anymore. <laughs> the phone mount mic work or phone mount work. Pinch it. No, other way. Apparently my RAM X mount is too complicated for Zeke of the Miata channel to figure out. Back up the hill we go. All right, right away, I noticed the throw on the shifter is significantly longer on this, which is interesting because Ron does not have a short shifter, uh, but I think that gearbox just naturally has a little bit shorter of a throw. Uh, the arm on the shifter is a little bit shorter. Big trailer coming the other direction, going real fast. Always got to watch out. Drive your sight lines on public roads. We're not out here to race. So far not having too much trouble here, but you got to keep in mind I've driven this car many, many, many miles on twisty roads. Very, very familiar with it. So, I'm certainly willing to push it a lot more than I'm sure Zeke is willing to push my cars. <laughs> yeah, this car is a much more aggressive experience. <laughs> Adam, 
Tom was saying that he uh, ended up having to focus on the, the car during the corners so and I could see what he means. This car is a handful, but it is a blast and it's very rewarding. I love the whine that you get out of the ND transmissions in third gear. This being an ND2, probably not a sign that it's going to explode, but fun little noise nonetheless. Yeah, I feel like this car could be pushed harder, but I don't feel comfortable doing that. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what I figured. Like I said, you know, you're talking about a car that I'm very familiar with and then a car that you're not, so it's not, a, not quite a comparison. <laughs> The feeling in the brake pedal is, is uh, a lot more different than I expected uh, with the steel brake lines uh, versus the, the stock uh, brake lines on this. Just definitely a little bit mushier and a little bit less sort of uh, direct feeling. Uh, noticed it right away when I touched the brake pedal. And the difference between the clutch in that one and this one, yeah, is pretty crazy. <laughs> well, the bite point on this one is really close to the bottom of the clutch travel. All right, so I'm back in the ND again. Adam is in Project Ron again, and we're uh, going to go on some more fun roads. It's a little wet, so we have to be careful. Yeah, the one thing about getting into the ND after being in Rod Project Ron is you notice a couple things right away. One is that the clutch is a lot softer. Uh, two is that the experience is much more toned down, whereas Ron is just raw. It's in your face. It's just you have to devote every bit of energy to focusing on that car. And not saying that the ND is not fun or not, uh, you know, a good competitor for Ron but uh, you know Ron is just kind of that next level above and I think if you did some uh, suspension mods to this ND uh, it would be a really stellar car too oh man yeah that must be insanely fun in Ron <laughs> Uh, these are crazy corners here. I really love this part. Just a beautiful day for driving Miatas. Would have been nice if we could have done top down today, but uh, you know, there's just off and on rain is enough to uh, make you take a pass on that. But uh, it's still been a fantastic day of driving, and you know, both of these cars are very capable. Uh, obviously, you know, Project Ron's got a lot more mods than this car does.
we're driving through Astoria, Oregon right now. We're going to go over the really iconic bridge here coming into the city. Uh, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, I always love going over this bridge. It's so beautiful and you've just got an absolutely stunning view from either side. You're so high up over the water. This is the mouth of the Columbia River where it meets the ocean. sun's out, the rain stopped, had to do a little bit of top down. Not sure if you can even hear me, the wind might be blotting me out. Almost done with the drive, but this has been a fabulous day. A lot of insight into the differences between these two cars, and uh, it was a lot of fun. Okay, well, that was a really epic day of driving. Uh, so, what are your thoughts on uh, comparing the, the ND to Ron? Well, I would say they're both very similar and very different, uh, honestly. Um, in terms of level of power, as we saw with the zero to 60 time, I think, uh, I think they're pretty close. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty evenly balanced. Braking too, um, but I would say the experience is just worlds apart. Um, yeah. Ron is uh, raw, is what I would say. <laughs> yeah, oh, definitely, yeah, I would agree. And, uh, I think we were saying earlier also is it seems that Ron has kind of a, a sweet spot in the mid-range of its power band where the ND seems to be more on the top. And I think, I don't think either car really has an advantage over the other one except that Ron just the, has the handling. <laughs> That's the thing I noticed as soon as, as soon as we got in those really tight corners and, and you're probably more comfortable with pushing your NDs farther than, than I am, but as soon as we got in those corners, it was like, Ron, Ron's out, like out of here. <laughs> so <laughs> The level of confidence that you have in Ron is, is pretty incredible. Just between the stiffness of the chassis, uh, the, the confidence under braking. Um, you know, I think I said uh, to you right after getting back into the ND, uh, what an incredible difference the the braking feel is um, yeah. and I don't know if that's a factor of the calipers uh, or or just the steel brake lines, but um, You know, it's 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 a stark stark difference the, the minute I put my foot on the brake pedal I could tell yeah oh, on the clutch too. the clutch was a huge difference as well I mean, I felt like when I got out of the ND and got into Ron it was like you know suddenly the clutch is a lot stiffer it has a lot tighter grab point to it and, uh, you know, everything feels a lot more, like you said, it's more, a lot more raw. It's, you feel like you're a lot more connected to the experience and, and uh, not to knock the ND, because the ND was fantastic. It was absolutely wonderful driving in it all day. Uh, but Ron just kind of has that next level. And a lot of that probably comes from the fact that it's got a lot of suspension work and bracing and things like that that make it a lot stiffer and, and just connect you to the road and just how well that felt. Yeah, and it's not to say either of the two cars aren't fantastic. You know? no, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of biased, I guess, but, yeah. Yeah. but uh, you know, all I could really think as we were swapping back and forth between these two cars was, uh, you know, I would rather drive either of these two cars than probably 99% of the things I've <laughs> yeah. driven in my life. Yeah, so. I can think of a few around here that, that might be good alternatives, but... Uh, I mean, it speaks wonders to what you get if you just buy an ND off yeah. the shelf. So. Yeah, and I can tell you it's not going to be an Elantra N. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all we have for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, share, or subscribe, and we'll see you next time.